It's national meets regional. Welcome to Sidewalks Entertainment, the long-running celebrity, music, and art series. Join us now for an exciting new path to celebrity interviews, music, rising talents, and much, much more. And we have two of the stars of the film. We have Christopher Palaha and David DeSantis. Welcome, guys, to Sidewalks Entertainment. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having us. So guys, before we get into the film where hope grows, uh, let's talk about uh, acting. Let's start off with you, Christopher. Um, is it true that your very first guest appearance was on the uh, classic series Angel? My first uh, paid, uh, my first paid gig. Um, I think the very first thing I ever did was a pilot for Fox called uh, Third Degree, which shot in New York City, and, and strangely enough, in March of 2001, and we shot in the courtyard of the World Trade Towers. And so this, the shot started at the very top of the towers and came down and found us in a piece of art. Um, and that was sort of, you know, the eve of the entire world changing. And then on 9-11, got Angel and another TV show for CBS called That's Life, and that was sort of the... The beginning of the train. Now, Chris, uh, you actually been in a lot of television projects. A lot of people might remember you from shows like Ringer, Life Unexpected, uh, Mad Men. You're on that. Um, Valentine. But was acting your very first uh, choice? No, my first choice was actually I was going to be an orthopedic surgeon, and I went to a boarding school near uh, where you guys are produced, San Francisco, in a, a place called Robert Louis Stevenson in uh, Pebble Beach, California. And it's a prep school, and it sort of fed into schools like Stanford and Berkeley, and all these kids were really, really bright, and I was a freshman, and I was not doing so great. And the dean of students said, listen, let's get you uh, involved in something after school. And so I tried out for the basketball team, and I tried out for a play, and I got cut from the basketball team. And I'm 6'4", I'm a big man, and, uh, but I just was not very coordinated. And I made the play, and it was called A Street Card of Desire by Tennessee Williams, and it was all seniors, except for me. I played the upstairs neighbor, uh, Steve Hubble. And these kids were just so passionate that it became my passion. And I did that for four years, and then I went to NYU and studied at the Tisch School of the Arts. And, um, and it was sort of off to the races from there. Now, David, to you, um, you know, Where Hope Grows is actually your very first film, your very first acting role. But was acting something you, you always wanted to do? Yes, it was. Um, I've dreamt uh, about acting since I was 11 uh, years old, even though it, it had started even before then. And I was in a broadcasting class. I was the lead anchor for all five days, plus I was uh, an, a weatherman back then. And, and now I am my own cooking show in, in high school in another broadcasting class. It's called Cooking with Dave. I've got four videos out there. You could go on my YouTube book channel and watch them. But my, and and uh, also, I'm always the co-anchor and sometimes the lead anchor. <laughs> so, uh, Christopher, let's uh, actually talk about the film here. Uh, tell us about the plot, uh, Where Hope Grows. I'll give you the rundown uh, from character to character real quick. My character is a guy named Calvin Campbell who was in the major leagues, he was a baseball player, um, sort of the high school star, and he fails out of the majors. He, uh, he couldn't hack it in the majors. And he has a daughter who's in high, uh, like a teenage daughter. And my character to cut to the chase is an alcoholic. And in this film you see him hit rock bottom. So the film deals with some very, very serious issues. Um, and there's a turnaround when my character meets David DeSanctis' character, Produce. And what we see is somebody who, from outward appearances, was dealt a very, very sort of rough hand in life. And yet Produce is so hopeful, and he's so joyful, and he's so inspirational, that my character has to wonder what his secret is. And the movie explores this unexpected friendship, and explores the ideas of redemption, and second chances, and having faith in something bigger than yourself. And it really is amazing in twofold that it's not about Down syndrome, but because David has Down syndrome, it deals with that um, in this way that is sort of extraordinary, giving a voice to a community that is mostly marginalized in our, in our society and sort of focuses on our abilities and not our disabilities, right? That's exactly right. 
Now, David, you got a chance to work with some very familiar actors. Uh, you had uh, Karate Kid's Billy Zapka, Baywatch's Brooke Burns, Heart of Dixie's Michaela Miller, two uh, people who were on sidewalks, uh, the songs Alan Powell and the lovely one of your star Danica McKella. What was it like for you to work with these uh, incredible actors? Uh, all of them is all inspirational. The one that really stands out to me is McKinley Miller from the Heart of Dixie and Wizards of Waverly Place because she really gave me faith, hope, and the love. Oh, that's great that Michaela was uh, so uh, nice to you. Well, guys, we're going to take a quick little break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about more of the film as well as, you know, are you guys good at memorizing your lines? And, and for David, are you a role model? So uh, stay with us. More Sidewalks in just a moment. Thank you for watching Sidewalks Entertainment on television. Don't forget, after the show, you can visit us on social media. Twitter. Facebook. And our website, SidewalksTV.com. So, David, I heard, now I heard about this, that you're very good at memorizing lines. Uh, was it something that came naturally, or did you have to get coached a little bit? Um, well, I, well, at first, I needed to do some coaching at first because it was hard at first, but not anymore now because I memorized my lines about after a week and a half or so. So, I... After then, it was easy. I memorized my lines. It was 130 in total. I loved it. I loved doing it, especially working with McKinley Miller. So, Christopher, what about you? Are you very good at memorizing lines? <laughs> it took me. It took, I, I never knew my lines. I was always like, what am I saying? Um, Stella Adler has this great quote, and she says, you're either born with it or you're not. She's like, I can teach technique, but I can't teach it. And uh, David DeSanctis certainly has it in spades. He walked on set and uh, the memorization, you know, that, that as Marlon Brando can attest, you can have your ear, you can have your lines, you know, fed in your ear if you need them. But uh, there's just something about certain actors that have, you know, charisma or that it factor and David has it. And uh, it was such a joy when you see him in the movie, <clears throat> the scenes that he's in are vibrant and they, they're just buoyant. It's fun. So David, you got a chance to do this film, your first acting role. Do you feel possibly like a role model? I am a role model, and about being in a role model, it comes along of with the territory of acting, of a lot, is because um, you feel like that you're on a one model after you've done several roles of in the acting world to others, being an, being an inspirational in order to others, giving out your autographs, being in pictures, and even um, getting in the other roles and all of that or through text messaging or emails, like the kind of the old fashioned way, or Facebook, or tweet to tweet on the Twitter, or the Instagram of just like that, of, of an instant second, They're like that kind of thing. You know, there's a, there's a scene in the movie um, where David and, it's Produce, and I'll just talk about our character names, it's Produce and Calvin, and, and Produce wants to be the um, employee of the month. And he says, do you think that I can, you know, be the employee of the month? And my character's encouraging. He's saying, yeah, of course, of course, you could do. And he's like, yeah, but it's not working out. And he turns up and he looks at Calvin, and there's just this beautiful shot of my character saying, you know, life isn't fair. And it's just framed on, on David's face, and it looks so beautiful in the movie. And I think where he's going to be the most amazing role model is not just for the Down Center community, but for me and for people who have never had experience with people with Down syndrome, all of a sudden you're going to realize, you know what, I'm not going to be uh, shy or uncomfortable. I'm just going to be, approach somebody, and even though they look different or talk differently than me, I'm going to break all these, except, uh, you know, the stereotypes that you have, they're shattered by David, and it's incredible to watch somebody. Because, like I said earlier, the movie's not about him having Down syndrome. He just is an actor with Down syndrome. And you watch the whole character 
<clears throat> the arc, you see his highs, you see his lows, and all of a sudden you uh, you relate to him, and you you know, and there's a, it's it's really inspirational, and I think that's where you're going to be a huge role model. So for that community, but also just for everybody, you're breaking, you're shattering stereotypes. Thank you, Chris. And life is good today. That is the very first lyrics from a song of Toes by the Zach Brown Band. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time. We have to go here, but I just want to say uh, uh, thanks very much for the interview. Continue success with your careers. And uh, thanks again for making uh, this incredible and inspirational film. You guys did a fantastic job. Thank you. For more full-length celebrity interviews, visit SidewalksTV.com.